once we know what limits are, we can work on different techniques for actually solving limits. So as we move into derivatives later uh, in calculus, we'll see that limits are really important to solve for different functions, especially when uh, the value at the function is, is not uh, defined. So we talked about discontinuity, where the limit can exist, but the value may not. That's why it's really important to be able to solve these limits. So we're going to look at a bunch of different techniques, the first one being what I would call factor and cancel. So here we have the limit as x goes to 2 of this rational function with a quadratic on top and a quadratic on the bottom. So every single time we solve a limit with any technique, we're always going to ask ourselves, is there a problem? And what I mean by that is if you sub in the value that x is going towards, if you sub that into the bottom or the denominator, is it going to 0? So is the bottom going to 0? We're, we can check this at any step of the way, and as soon as the questions, or as soon as the answer is no to that question, we can just sub in the value for x and solve the limit. So let's see if it does. If we were to put, notice how x is going to 2 here. So if we were to put 2 in the bottom, we would get 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6. And that equals 4 minus 10 plus 6, so that does equal 0. So yes, there is a problem. So that's too bad, because that means we're going to have to do some work. But that's going to be the majority of the time when they give you limits. Um, otherwise, it would just be a simple substitution. So what have we got to do? Well, we said this is called factor and cancel. So I'm going to do my answer in green. Each time we write a new line, we want to write the limit as x approaches 2. We're going to write that until we actually sub in 2. And <clears throat> ideally, we'll be able to, to factor everything in sight. So let's do that, top and bottom. So on top, hopefully we're good at uh, factoring our quadratics. I won't spend much time on this, but it factors into x plus 6, x minus 2. And the bottom factors to, we want two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5. So it's x minus 3 and x minus 2. So let's take a quick look at the bottom. We said that if we subbed in 2, it would go to 0. And you can see why, because of this bracket here. So this is kind of our problem child down there, right? Because when we sub in 2 into this bracket, that's fine. It goes to minus 1. Sub in 2 to this bracket, it goes to 0, and we know we can't have a 0 in the denominator. Luckily, there is a x minus 2 factor on top, so we can just cancel these. Now the problem's gone, so we can say, is the bottom going to 0? No, it's not. As soon as we can say no, we sub it in. So sub in 2 for x, we get 2 plus 6 over 2 minus 3. Notice I'm no, no longer writing the limit because I've subbed in 2. And it equals 8 over negative 1, which is just negative 8. So the limit as x approaches 2 of this function is negative 8. Now, a quick note here. Notice that because there's that x minus 2 in the denominator of the original function, that function, this, this rational function, is actually not defined at x equals 2. So there would actually be a hole in the graph if you were to, to plot this, but that hole is found when y is negative 8. So it, it would look like from both sides that the graph is approaching y equals negative 8 at x equals 2, but at that exact point, it's actually undefined. For limits, we don't care what it is at the point, though. We just care what it's getting really, really close to. So that's a good example of factoring. Let's take a look at one more technique. Okay, so we've looked at factoring and canceling. So those are usually found with when there's quadratics on the top and the bottom. Uh, the second technique I want to talk about is we'll call it the conjugate. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate. When do we look for, for this technique? Well, this is when there is an x or your variable trapped under a square root. So let's take a look at this example. Let's first ask ourselves, is there a problem? And again, that means if I sub in the value that x is going to, is the bottom going to 0? If I sub 4 in for x here, the square root of 4 is 2, minus 2, yes, the bottom will be 0. So there is a problem. Now, unfortunately, there's no factoring to do here. We can't really, there's no x squareds or things like that, so we can't factor. But what we do notice is that we have an x variable trapped under a square root. So what do we do? We're going to multiply by what, by, to the top and bottom by what's called the conjugate. And that just means if we take this in brackets, 
we're going to multiply by the exact same thing where this x is trapped except for change the sign. So instead of the square root of x minus 2, I'm going to multiply by the square root of x plus 2. And, the re and you have to do the same to the top and bottom, obviously. The reason we do that is so that the square roots will go, but you're not left with a bunch of extra terms. So let's watch what this multiplies to. So we've got the limit as x goes to 4. Uh, on top, we can't really multiply that all out. There wasn't a square root on top, so we'll just leave it as is. Otherwise, it would get pretty messy. But on the bottom, let's FOIL this out. So square root of x times square root of x is x. Outside is 2 times root x, so that's plus 2 root x. Inside is negative 2 times root x, so that's negative 2 root x. And outside, or last, I'm sorry, is negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So all I did was FOIL these two brackets out. Uh, let's keep simplifying. So we have the limit as x approaches 4. Don't forget to write that every time. x minus 4 times root x plus 2. All over. So what have we got here? Well, you can see that the plus 2x and the minus 2x cancel. So we're just left with x minus 4 on the bottom. Great. And again, you can see how this looks much cleaner, x minus 4, rather than root x minus 2. So that's the power of the conjugate is it'll get rid of your... Um, square roots because a square root times a square root just gets rid of it and because we change the sign that'll get rid of the middle term ask ourselves the question again is there a problem yes the bottom would still go to zero if we sub in four but what can we do we can cancel our problem now now there's no more problem sub it in sub in four for what's left so we have the square root of four plus two and that just equals two plus two which equals four so the limit as x approaches 4 there equals 4. Once again, there would be a hole in the function. It actually wouldn't exist when x is 4. Um, but the y value would look like it's approaching y equals 4. So hopefully that's a good example of the conjugate and factoring. There's really easy clue-ins as to when to use them. Use the factoring when there's quadratics or cubics or something like that where you can take out a common factor. And the conjugate is used when your x value is trapped under a square root. Hopefully that, uh, that's helpful. We'll take a look at limits to infinity and some other techniques in future videos. You can always email us more questions at info at arnoldtutoring.com. Thanks.